Hello, all you lovely people out there. Kevin from CC Pipe here, where we focus on productivity and pipeline for creatives. As I promised, I'm back with more grep, and if you haven't seen part one, you can find that on screen now. And there I talked about grep using search and replace in InDesign. For this video, though, we'll look at using it in our paragraph styles. So if you didn't already know, we can use grep in our paragraph styles to automatically apply character styles, and we'll look at how in just a second. But why do I consider this being something worth acknowledging? Well, what I came up with was this. Of course, automatically applying a character style saves us time not doing it ourselves, but it also saves us the time finding all potential occurrences where we want to do it. Say you have a large company publication and you want to apply a character style every time your company name is mentioned. It's going to be a lot easier having InDesign searching for you than doing it yourself. So let's look at how to do this. And here we have InDesign. First, I have a simple text set up here with a paragraph style applied. To start us off, we go into the paragraph style options by right-clicking this one called text and choosing edit. Then we find the grep style tab over here. And this is where all the magic happens. This works like this. First, we need to add a new grep style like this. Then we choose what character style we want to use. Conveniently, we also get the option right here to create a new one without exiting out. Then just write in here what we want to apply this to. It could be as easy as just a simple character or a word. So if we, for example, add just a letter here, we can see that it will then apply the style to all occurrences of that letter. Then we can also use grep and be a bit less specific. And for that, we can use this menu right here, which should be quite familiar if you watched part one. It's the same one as in search and replace. To demonstrate, uh, let's use a wildcard. Those are often quite useful. And if we choose any white space and then grab my character style strike through here, you can see that once we click outside the box here, it adds a strike through to every white space in the text. Not especially useful perhaps, but it hopefully demonstrates how this works. Let's look at a more practical example though. And here's the layout from part one. And I thought we could format the price a bit here. And just to mention it, I have already prepared all styles since that isn't really what this video is about. The price has this style right here, and let's get into the options again. The first thing I thought we could do is making the unit a bit smaller. Uh, let's say our client is very particular with what they want. We then add a new grep style. Choose this one here called 80%, which shrinks the text a bit. Then just write a euro sign in here, and now we should see that the unit has become smaller. Yep, that looks good so far. Next, they want the actual price to be a different color than the unit. Okay, so now we get to use some grep. Similar to what we did in part one, we can use the wildcards to describe the price. That would first be a number, and that's any digit, which is backslash D. Then that could be one or two numbers, so we write a plus for one or more times, and then we have the decimal. But if we just write a dot, it will think we mean any character. Therefore, we add a backslash before it to indicate that we want the actual character. Then we have two more numbers after that, and that would be just backslash D two times. We, of course, also need to choose our character style. So let's choose this one light. And now we have a new color for the price. Lastly, they think that the decimal numbers need to be smaller as well. Okay, no worries, we can do that too. So how do we get this? Well, the identifier that we have is the decimal dot, which always will be before it. That sounds like a positive look behind to me, which we'll find here. Behind will be our decimal dot. So in the parentheses, we write backslash dot. Then what we want to format is the two decimal numbers, which will be just backslash D two times for any digit. Lastly, we just choose our style, which will be this one called decimal. And there we have it, a happy client. And if they change their mind, which they are liable to do, we can easily adjust it in their styles. That will be it for me this time though. And hope you got an idea of what grep in InDesign can be used for. If you're interested and really want more grep, you can also watch my batch rename tutorial where I use grep to rename files at the end. Thank you so much for watching and make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoy the video. It helps me out a lot. And also, if you have any productivity questions or suggestions for future videos, make sure to throw those in the comments below. Once again, thank you and until next time, have a good one.